I've reviewed quite a few of these electric bikes so far, and I've never been more conflicted with one than when Hofsko sent me this electric bike. There's a lot to love, and a lot that needs to be ironed out, but let's build this thing and see how easy it is to put together. So we got another electric bike sent to my house, and this one is from Hofsko. Now I'm getting a little fed up building these things, they're a pain in the ass, at least some of them. So let's hope that this one is a little bit easier. Let's find out. Right off the bat, the tire isn't on this one. Well, that was easy. Of course, watching someone strip styrofoam is like watching paint dry, so let's just skip ahead. So right out the box, you get the frame, you get a tire, you got charging cable, pedals, a bag of tools right here, and then they give you the kickstand, and then I don't know what that is for. I know what that is for. That's to guard against the, uh, the rear brakes situation back there, but I don't know what this is. But it looks like we have a manual, so we're gonna find out soon. The first step was the kickstand. This was really easy. Just tuck the kickstand behind the frame and tighten it down. After that, it's time to install the handlebars. Remove this front bracket, pull the handlebars up so the screen is facing the ceiling, and tighten the bracket back down. Up next, we have our front tire. I always dread this part on these bikes, but Hofsko made it easy. You just remove this long bolt, pop the wheel down into place, making sure the brakes are on the right side of the bike. Then you take this quick release, slide it through the wheel, and tighten it down. Other e-bike companies, please learn from Hofsko with this. There's no reason it shouldn't be this easy. Next we have the pedals. This is pretty straightforward. Screw them in and use one of their wrenches to tighten them down. The last component is the derailleur guard. This piece protects the gears and chain mechanisms from getting slammed from the side of the bike. And Hofsko recommends you go to a bike shop to have this installed. They don't even give you a wrench large enough to take the nut off the bike. So I found my own wrench and installed it. Not sure why they want you to take it to a shop, this was one of the easiest things to do, but if for some reason you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can take it in. After about an hour, the bike was fully assembled and it was time to take it out, ride it around, and share my thoughts. So let's talk about this thing. Now, this is one of the most quality bikes I've ever been sent, mechanically and structurally. For example, instead of the same old basic mechanical disc brakes you always see on these things, you actually have Zoom hydraulic brakes, which are much more responsive, and now coming to a stop is a lot safer and more reliable at max speeds. You also get a brake indicator on screen when they're activated, and the motor completely shuts down when you grip these. You then have a 7-speed Shimano gear shift, which you've heard a thousand times before, but this is Shimano's updated mechanism which has a lower profile, while operating basically the same as the standard top-mounted unit. Internally, we have a 960-watt, 20 amp hour lithium-ion battery. Not only is this one of the biggest batteries we've seen on an electric bike, but the cells inside are actually Samsung or LG brand batteries, which is pretty high caliber and ensures that these batteries will last longer than your standard 18650 cell battery pack. They really put a lot of attention into ensuring their bike was built with high quality parts, and you can see this in the seamless body. They actually sanded down the weld, so this bike looks sharp, and I for one love the look of this thing. The motor inside is a 750 watt brushless motor paired with a torque sensor. See, most electric bikes run what's known as a cadence sensor, which means when the bike feels the pedals move, it'll give the rider all the power it has. A torque sensor works differently than that. See, I could be on pedal assist 5, and because I'm barely pedaling, I'm only going 5 miles an hour. If I give the bike some extra force, the motor will then notice that force and match it with some assisted energy. This is the first electric bike that I've ridden that will not do all the work for you. To me, this feels like a harmony between user and machine, and if you like the idea of electric bikes but you don't want to be lazy and have the bike do all the work, getting one with a torque sensor would be the perfect middle ground. You still have a ton of power, but you actually have to work for it. And as far as I can tell, this really allows the rider more freedom in variable speeds. Moving on, these are the biggest tires I've seen on an electric bike. These are 26 by 4 inch fat tires, and just to give you an idea of how massive that is, the Jaceon has 20 by 3, and I thought those were big. This bike dwarfs the Jaceon, but even still, it's not super heavy. This bike is 71 pounds or 32 kilograms, which is heavy, but for its size, is kind of impressive. 
This bike doesn't fold in half though, so lugging it around can be a bit of a rough task. The weight capacity of this bike is 450 pounds, or 204 kilograms, which means this bike could easily accommodate almost any rider. With all that taken into consideration, the expected range is 80 miles, and of course, that's perfect conditions. Perfect weight, flat ground, no wind, and low pedal assist modes. But even still, 80 miles is an impressive standard that I see a lot of electric bikes trying to reach these days. The max speed is also pretty standard. You can get this bike to go 28 miles an hour. Out of the box, however, it'll only go 5 on throttle and 15 while pedaling, and I'll explain more about that later. This bike also uses a thumb throttle instead of a half twist, which I thought was an interesting choice. It takes me back to my quad riding days, and this throttle is force sensitive, which makes for a really smooth ride. Especially if you're done riding and trying to park it in the garage, you can use the throttle to slowly walk it into place. You also have a full color display, which looks really good. Under that is a light, which is okay, and I've not yet been impressed with the light on these bikes. The grips here are also really soft rubber, which is very nice, and besides that, the handlebars are pretty bare. As for suspension, the Hovsko Alpha has front fork suspension, but nothing in the rear, which is kind of a shame, and we'll get into that later. Now, the keys they give you for this bike are not really essential for turning the bike on. All the keys do is unlock the battery compartment so you can pull it out, which is kind of strange to me. These electric bikes are hot ticket items, and if anyone wanted to steal one, you'd be happy to know that having the keys on you ensures that all they can do is ride away powerlessly. With this bike, you can turn it on so long as the battery is in the bike. Again, the keys are only here to unlock this compartment. That being said, the battery is different than most. When you take it out of the bike, you'll notice that you have a battery indicator on the side, telling you where its charge is at. Then on the other side, there's a flashlight button. This battery doubles as a powerful floodlight. This light has four modes, dim, medium brightness, full, and then there's a flasher setting. Now, I wondered about the practicality of this thing. I thought that maybe if your bike broke down on the side of the road, you could use the battery to get the attention of oncoming drivers. If you were carrying tools on you and your bike breaks down at night, you can use the battery to see what you're doing. More realistically, if you go camping and you brought the bike, you can use the battery as an extra lantern. This light bar has 120 LEDs inside of it, which means a 950 watt 20 amp hour battery would last forever even with the lights on. Now, there's quite a bit more to talk about with this bike, and this is where things get a little conflicting for me. I want to say outright, I think this is a great bike, but there are some decisions that I don't really understand and some things that I personally don't like. The first thing is the seat. This is your standard complaint and every bike I've ever tested had a pretty underwhelming seat. This one is flat and wide, which is nice, but it's hard as a rock and definitely something that I would replace. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that the bike doesn't come with stock fenders, a tail light, or a rear rack. Now, don't get me wrong here. This is a killer bike with some high quality parts, and I see why they had to limit what they could offer for the price. They also do offer these components on their site, so if you wanted them, you're not locked out completely. Now, this last con was the biggest issue that I ran into with this thing. See, this bike comes with a governor, which means when you first get it, the throttle will only allow you to go 5 miles an hour, and pedaling will only get you up to 15. That's fine, but I asked Hovsko how I could unlock the bike, and they told me that if I wanted to unlock the 28 mile an hour speed, I had to download their app. Problem was, they only had the app for the Apple Store, so they had to send me a Google Drive link for the Android version. So I get the app set up, I made myself an account, and for some reason or another, I just could not get the app to work. Now, Hovsko did tell me that they'd be optimizing the app, and it will eventually be on the Google Play Store. I was pretty annoyed that the app stopped me from unlocking the speed, so I sent them another message and after some time I was able to unlock the speed setting. So I do know that they'll be able to fix this app and you shouldn't run into any trouble. And if you do, you can contact their customer support team who is very responsive and will help you with whatever you need. After unlocking the bike, I have to say this is a really comfortable ride. It's a huge bike which means even going over rough terrain is a cinch for this thing. And I've even seen people use this bike for trail riding. If you want to know more about this thing, I'll have a link in the description that'll take you to their website. Hofsko has a killer bike, and I appreciate it greatly that they asked me to review it. I hope this video was helpful to you. Ride safe out there, everyone.